The following video will show you how to set up and troubleshoot an LMA 1250 Eberly Design Detector. So the first thing you want to do is energize and plug in the unit. When you do that, it will show you numbers. And I give you examples. So the power light will be off. It'll show seven and nine. What this is telling you is that the frequency that this unit is set at is 70. 9 kilohertz. So if you have multiple loop detectors, I recommend that you change your frequency on each unit. So let's say unit one, you keep them both off. Unit two, you push them back both on, and when you hit the power, you'll see that it's now 61 kilohertz. So that means that the two loops are with different frequencies, so you won't get any crosstalk. So when we come out of the factory, we usually have it set for the, if you notice, the high, which down here you see that both of them off being high and minimum low, minimum high, and low. So that's what those are for. Once you've now set your frequency, and if you only have one loop, you don't have to do that. You can just leave it at the default. But if you have multiple loops, we recommend you changing your frequency. So now we're going to go ahead and set it up. So you take a four-door sedan. In this case, it's a small truck, uh, which is equal to a four-door sedan. And we're going to go ahead and send it through. And you see that it's now set at one. We don't want that to be one. We want to get a nice strong reading but we don't want to go anything more than five because this is your mid-range or your standard setting so we're going to go ahead and make that five if you notice that the output a is on and output b is on also meaning that tell you that the relay has closed and will stay closed until the car leaves so we're going to go ahead and let the car go and now we've calibrated our unit. At this point, you're pretty much done. What I'm going to do is go ahead and send some cars through to show you what it looks like. So with a four-door sedan, you got a five. We're going to go ahead and do the sports car next, which means that the chassis is a little lower to the ground. So I expect a higher reading, which we got a six. And then we're going to go to one of your high-lifted high, high lifted trucks like a F-150 and if you notice that was a four now we're gonna go ahead and send a truck with a trailer and you're gonna see that you're gonna get a number four and then you see that the trailer was a one <clears throat> this is a good opportunity to explain about the boost the boost is for trailers or for vehicles that have pull um, a trailer or some kind of hitch so if you want to you go ahead and turn this on and it lets the device know that if it there's a trailer so we're gonna go ahead and send the trailer through again and if you notice what's gonna happen is you're gonna get four and it's just gonna hold that four there's a three but it, it actually picks it up so you don't see a drop occasionally what will happen is if you don't have the boost on and the trailer comes across and it's further away you may see the output go on and off and what you want to do is you don't want the gate to start to close when the trailer is still on the loop we're going to go ahead and send our little motorcycle through. And if you notice, it did pick it up. It was a one. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the settings on the back. So what you see here is the 11 pin connector that's on the back of the unit. There is a set of diodes on or dip switches on top two, And there's a set of dip switches on the bottom. You have eight dip switches on the bottom so the first dip switch we talked about is the boost the second is presence for the output a relay so it's normally off meaning that it, it's infinite as long as there's a car on the loop it will stay closed the relay will close once a car leaves it will open if you want it to be a momentary presence or a 
on and then off, even if the vehicle is still on the loop, then you would turn it on to make it momentary or limited. The next one is a delay, and a delay is when the vehicle goes across, and I can show you here, we're going to go ahead and turn on the delay, and we're going to send the car across, and what you're going to see is it goes with the D, and then it gives you the call. So that's what the delay does. So if you have a display that shows the D, you know that you have your delay on. Extend, we're going to go ahead and put a two second extend. We're going to turn, take the take the delay off because, and then we're going to go ahead and send the sports car across. And if you notice, it extended two more seconds. So after he left the loop, it stayed on for two more seconds. We're going to do it again. There you go. It stays on for two seconds. So that's what you get when you put a extend. The next two take care of the output for B. And what these do is when the car goes across for the first one, it will always be a pulse entry, meaning that when the car goes across, it'll pulse the output B. If you want that to be like A, you're going to turn on the first dip switch and the second dip switch off, and then the output B will look like or act like output A. And the last one is, or the, the next last is uh, the pulse on exit. So what that does is when the vehicle leaves, it will pulse on the exit. So usually you use that to take a picture of the camera and see it left and it pulsed. So a lot of people use the uh, output B to activate a camera. I've also seen it used to pulse a light to let you know that there's a car coming or a car went over the loop. Also a horn to indicate that there was a vehicle there. So it's separate from your output A relay. So we give you two relays to work with. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the faults. So if you have a loop fault and usually there's Four different ways or three different ways one is an open loop so I'm going to go ahead and put an open and what should happen is you should have an F and then the number one should come on back and forth in this uh, video we're not showing the one F1 but that's what it's doing you should see that <clears throat> you should also see that if it's a constant open that the relay will always put a call in on both A and B and that the loop failure light should come on. So this tells you right now you presently have a open loop. Now if you have a loose wire and we do self healing so if the wire makes a connection again we're going to remove the fault but what will happen is you'll come to this unit and you'll say oh I have a loop fault. So this tells you that you don't presently have one because if a car goes across it's going to work. But if the loop fault is here and it's flashing with this once every half a second, it lets you know it was an open. If you hit reset, it lets you know that it's going to tell you the frequency, it's going to turn on the power, and it's going to let you know that the loop is back in operation, meaning that that fault was a momentary fault. A short is when the wires actually make a connection in short, and you would see F2 in this display would trans go back and forth from F2, so F and 2. Here, if you notice, the flash rate is a little quicker, so it's off, on, on, off. So that gives you that you have a short. If you remove the fault, it removes the fault, but it lets you know that we that you had a fault and if you notice it's giving that same rate so it's two flashes and an off so that lets you know there's a short same thing hit the reset it lets you know that everything's good to go again and that was your frequency 20 percent change in inductance this is letting you know that the detector has seen a change with the loop now what's going to happen is it's going to let you know that and it's going to give you that warning so it'll go away because it's still 
going to learn and recalibrate and work the loop will work or the detector will work but it's letting you know that there was a deductance change meaning something has the integrity of the loop is starting to fade by 20 percent if you hit the reset it goes away and you're back to normal operations